Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Here you go, another tutorial. This time it's not paint pens though, guys. It's it's uh it's paint and paint brushes. And please ignore this horrible hubba bubba pink color that I started off with on the petals. The most important part of this stone today is the bumblebee. So I started off with pink petals. I changed them to like a dark berry wine color, which I much preferred. And uh, either way, you can see both options and decide what you want to do. So it's just going to be a simple cone flower, an echinacea. I started with a bigger sponge and made like the, the cone part of the flower. And now I'm just going to put a bunch of horrible pink transparent petals for you to stare at for a little while. Like I said, the most important part is the bumblebee because I love bumblebees. And I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there that also love bumblebees. And they're not that difficult to paint. If you just do a couple of cute little easy steps with um, sponges, it makes it really easy. So I'm going to show you how to do it today. So you can see my horrible pink flowers are not going well, even with a second coat. <laughs> and I am going to ignore those completely and work on the bumblebee with you. Wow. Wow not very nice. I wasn't happy with it. I just, I don't know if the paint was too transparent. I just wasn't happy with it. So I'm going to use a little tiny uh, sponge dauber from CraftSmart. I buy them at Michael's. So check Michael's for CraftSmart sponge daubers. Um, they work amazing for making little bumblebees and stuff look fuzzy. So I just started with like almost a jelly bean type shape in the black. I let it dry. Now I did three sections of yellow and I will need to do a couple of coats on top of that because the black shows through so it looks kind of grayish yellow. But I want it to look yellow so I'm going to add a couple of coats and let them dry. While I'm letting these coats dry I'm going to add the little leggies, cute little leggies, just dangling there because he's hovering above the cone flower. And there his wings will be and the fine lining brush that I'm using is in the description. It's on my channel, DIY Fine Lining Brush. And it has made my life so much easier. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of white and black right there to make like a little grayish area for his eye to be. And then I'm gonna put two dots of white on there. So you'll see that soon. Now, now that I've got the wings, I'm gonna add a little bit of orange just to the top. It's not going to look that bright of orange soon because I'm going to keep layering on top of this, okay? I'm adding a little bit more yellow, but if you do see bumblebees once in a while, they're so yellow that they're orange. Like the the, the yellow hairs on their body are so dense that it, it looks orange. So I am going to make sure that I add orange to my bumblebee. Now he is starting to look super cute. Now my rock is gonna go really dark when I when I resin it, you'll see at the end. So I've had to actually add an outline of gold around his, his head, his antennae, his legs, his wings, just a little bit of gold so that you can see um, where his head is because that's how dark my rock went. So keep that in mind. If your rock is gonna go really dark, Test it with a little bit of water to see how dark it's going to go. And then you'll know whether you need to add the gold uh, to accent where your bumblebee's head is and everything and legs. You will see. So I, as you can see, I'm layering again. I've added now that I've got the orange and the yellow where I want it. I got to add a little bit more black. So I'm just sponging on a little bit of black where the black is. And then I also lightened the bum of the bee with a little bit of white because they have a little bit of white on their bums. So that is how you do a bumblebee. Now, uh, like I said, I don't show you that I outline it in gold because I actually didn't know to do that. I wasn't thinking back from vacation. Um, so I resined it and then it was like, oh my goodness, where's my bumblebee's head? Where's its legs? I can't find it. So I actually had to go back over with gold and then re-resin it again. 
<laughs> so don't make the same mistake that I did. Uh, once again, ignore the color of the flowers right now because we're changing it to berry wine. And I have outlined all the petals with black. If you were able to um, add the stem to the flower, that's awesome. But obviously where I put my flower, I didn't leave room for a stem to show underneath. But you can. You can just raise your flower up higher and your bumblebee up higher and uh, add a stem there. So I am coloring in all of the petals in a berry wine color. All paint colors will be listed in the drop down uh, description menu that you can see. Hit the drop down arrow, guys. You will see all my secrets in there, I promise. Um, I will show you all the colors that I used and you can use whatever colors you want. You don't have to make the mess that I've made. <laughs> Let's just say you can take a look on Google or Pinterest at cone flowers and or echinacea flowers and see what colors they are and go from there. You don't have to copy what I'm doing. So I am making sure that I have a couple of coats of that uh, berry wine on there. I'm adding a little bit of nail glitter to the cone part of my flower, just the top, uh, around the top, and it really looks super cool. Like it's, it gives it a nice, a nice technique. But like I said, if you're working on a dark rock like me, you're gonna wanna carefully, thinly outline the gold around that cone part, part of the flower, as well as the petals, because I'm also going to put a little bit of gold on my petals too. So I also took some of that gold dust for nails. I put it on little sections of the yellow on the bee as well. So just the top part of the bee has a bit of crystal, crystally shine to it. And the top part of the cone flower has a little bit of shine to it. It's hard to see, uh, but once you seal it, all that glitter really comes out. Trust me. I'm going to be using uh, something today to seal that glitter in, in place before I resin it because I don't want the glitter to move and just like swim across the top of my rock and the whole thing is glittery. Um, I want to keep that glitter in one spot. So I'm actually going to use a DuraClear gloss varnish and just gloss the areas that have the glitter and wait for that to dry before I seal it with resin. So I'm currently outlining my petals with gold. Um, and everything else that I should have outlined with gold, I didn't. Um, but you'll see at the end what it looks like with the outline of gold. And you'll see just how magically dark this rock goes. Some people will accuse me of painting the background of my rock different without telling you. And it's like, no, man, <laughs> I resined it. And that's how much my rock changed. So the best thing for you to do, run your rock underwater and see what it's going to look like once it's sealed. Um, that way, you know what you're working with. That's my best advice today. That and sponges. Sponges. Everybody gets sponges. So I've got the glitter hologram in his wings. I've got the glitter on the top of the cone flower. Everything looks fantastic. I should have outlined it in gold, but you will see. Sign it. I'm signing my signature on one of the petals, actually, just putting my initials there. And pretty soon, you're going to see it resined. So this is the DuraClear uh, varnish that I put on the sections that just have the glitter. And so that keeps all the glitter in place. I'm also going to put uh, a red nail glitter, same as the gold nail glitter that I've already used on here. Uh, I'm going to put that on the petals. Now I just wanted to make sure that it's black on the cone flower where I want it to be because there was a little bit of glitter that escaped and uh, blew over to a spot I didn't want it to be. So I'm just adding with a sponge again. Um, some black to make sure that that glitter doesn't show through where I didn't want it to. And this is where you can do like any quick cleanup that you need to do or um, any final touches. Let everything dry really well before you seal it with anything. 
So here's the red glitter I was talking about. Uh, once again, all my secrets are in the drop down menu. So if you want to find out where I got this glitter or uh, what what colors I was I was using, I will list that in the description. I do buy uh, my nail glitter on Amazon and it comes with like five or seven different colors of nail uh, nail chrome powder, I guess it's called. Um, and I use every single color. Can you believe it? I, and it lasts a long time. You do not need a lot, a little dabble, do ya? As you can see, it just creates a whole different look to your artwork, to be honest. And I'm a real, I love glitter. I love sparkle. <laughs> So I'm going to put some more of this DuraClear on the petals because I did just put the red uh, powder on the petals and I don't want the red uh, glitter, sorry, to run up over top of my bee or anywhere else on the rock. So I'm going to keep it in place using DuraClear. You can also use Mod Podge um, or uh, clear nail polish I've used in the past as well. Um, but uh, I've had no issues with the DuraClear so far. Looking nice. Now here's where it changes. Da, 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 da. See how my head and legs would disappear on the background of this stone? It is marble. It looks like pure marble. But look at how beautiful this turned out, guys. So once again, my tip, if you've got a dark rock, add some gold. Nothing wrong.